everybody. It's Roger from Kettle Creek and we're here today to give you a virtual tour of the pond at our site up at the Meese Nature Center. This pond has been here for over 40 years and it is home to a wide variety of critters, amphibians and insects and all kinds of things. And what we're going to do today is we're going to use one of these nets we're going to dip it in the pond. We're going to see what we can find inside the pond, put them in the containers and take a look at them and uh, talk about how they can survive in this pond here at the Meese Nature Center. We need to have some equipment to make sure these animals stay safe. And here at our pond, we're going to use a white bucket like this to put water in it. And then of course the net to dip the animals out. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to the edge of the pond and very carefully dip some clean water into that bucket. Now we don't need to fill it all the way up, just about an inch or two. And then we're gonna set it right up here and any animal we catch, we can put in that bucket and it'll allow them to stay safe and, and uh, breathe under the water in the bucket while we can take a closer look at it. Now the net is not a shovel and if you look into the pond, there's a lot of dead plants and leaves and stuff around here, really good hiding places for all kinds of things. So, okay guys, let's see what we can find. I'm going to dip my net around these old cattails and bring it right up out of the water. Now, the water will be down through the bottom of the net, but it'll capture the bugs and stuff. Take a look at this, guys. That is a baby dragonfly. We call it a nymph because it's not mature yet. When it becomes mature, it'll get wings and fly away. So let's put him in the bucket. There he goes. He'll be fine in the water there. That's all I had in that dip, so I'm going to empty that out, and I'm going to try again in a different spot. Oh man, look at all that muck and stuff coming out of that pond, but boy, we got lots of stuff in here, guys. Take a look at this. Look at this, a red spotted newt. He's got red spots on his side. We're going to put him in the bucket, Oops. and then I saw some of these flipping around. You guys know what those are. Those are tadpoles. We're going to pick some of them out. Look how they hide in that muck. They have very good camouflage. You guys know what camouflage is. But I'm going to dip them right out of there. Look at that. Now, pick this up a little bit. Yeah, it's a little muddy, but that's okay. We can wash our hands in the pond. There's another dragonfly. Look how well he blends in into that muck. Now once I put him in the water, it'll wash him off a little bit. Look at the mud coming off of him. And see how he moves? Pretty cool. Now I think that's most of the... Oh, look at this. I got another dragonfly. Boy, they are hard to see in that muck. Okay, I'm going to dump this net back in and we'll take another dip or two. I'm going to go out just a little bit further. Now I wore boots today so I can get in just a little deeper. See what I can find way out there, as far as I can reach. Wish you guys were here because if you, it smells a little bit like rotten eggs and that's the mud and stuff from the bottom of the pond. Doesn't mean the water's dirty, it's just that dead plant stuff. Here we go. You guys know what that is? Another dragonfly. And that looks like about it. Okay, let's move over this way a little bit and take a dip or two over here. Then we'll talk about what we got. Dipping out in those dead vegetation. Oh man, look at the size of this tadpole, guys. Look at that. That's a big one. That's a green frog tadpole. He's gonna turn into a frog this year. In fact, I'm looking to see if he got he doesn't have legs yet, but I bet he will in a few weeks. He'll start growing legs and change it into a frog. I gotta get him in a bucket though, he needs water. Here we have a bug. 
a really cool bug. Now, I'm going to be careful with him. He's flopping around like crazy. I don't want to lose him. This is a back swimmer. Watch what he does in the water. He does the backstroke. Look at that. He's got two long legs, which help him paddle. And when he stops backstroking, he'll come to the top and he'll stick his tail out of the water because he actually breathes through his tail. If you remember the puppet show, we talked about insects that can breathe underwater through their tail and the back swimmer is a good example of that. He's trying to hide under the dragonfly right now. There we go. Okay, let's take a few more scoops. Okay guys, we have two different containers with lots and lots of animals that live here at the pond. And we were only dipping for about 10 or 15 minutes. So these animals all share that one habitat. As you look at them though, they're all going to be dark colors, brown and green. And uh, that way they can stay camouflaged and hide in the muck that you saw us dipping out of the bottom of the pond. Now what we're going to do, as a scientist, we want to get some information down about these animals. So we have this sheet of paper here that asks us questions about some of the animals that we saw in the pond. So let's see, question number one. We want to draw a picture of an animal that uses its legs to move. Okay, let's take a look at these guys. I see a lot of different animals in here swimming around. Well, the tadpoles, they don't use legs, they don't have them, they're just using their tail. Dragonflies use their legs a little bit, but hey, look at this guy right here. This is our back swimmer, and he's not as big, but look at him paddle with that big, long legs that he has. So what we're going to do is I'm going to scoop him out of here, or try to. There's a lot of other creatures in there. Whoops, got a salamander with him. Going to move the salamander for now, and take a look at that back swimmer. He's definitely got two long legs that lets, it's like rowing a boat, guys, or paddling a kayak with those long legs. So I'm going to set him right there. And now I am going to draw a picture of him. So he's going to look a little bit like this. He doesn't have a whole lot of that. And it doesn't have to be the best picture. He's got some small legs up front and two eyes. And then he's got these real long, big back legs that help him swim. What do you think? That's our back swimmer. And he swims on his back upside down. And he also, when he stops swimming, he sticks his tail out of the water and breathes. So if he stops and floats to the top, he's pretty cool. Hey guys, every once in a while, you might see a back swimmer in your pool, if you have a pool behind your house, because they can actually fly. Sometimes they'll land in your pool. Okay, that takes care of question number one. That's our back swimmer. Let's put him back in here. Question number two, draw a picture of an animal that uses its tail to move. Okay, we got lots of great choices here. We've already talked about some of them, but I think the best one with the tail is definitely our tadpole. So let me pick out the biggest tadpole here so he's easy to see. Look at him. I'm going to put a little bit more water in here for him. He's going to swim around and use his tail to swim in the, into the, uh, in the pond. And that's good because a lot of animals would love to eat that tadpole. So there he is and he's got a big flat tail for swimming. Now, hey guys, we know he's gonna turn into a frog. When he turns into a frog, guess what? That tail's gonna disappear and he's gonna have legs. But for now, we're gonna draw a picture of the tadpole. They got a big fat body, almost a circle, not quite. And then they have the tail floating back on his back. He's got two eyes. Whoops, that almost looks like a mouth, but we're gonna get rid of that mouth. There we go. That's our tadpole. And if you look, he doesn't really have much colors. He's got a few little dark specks on his body, which helps him to hide. Now that tadpole is from a green frog, which is one of our bigger frogs. And we know that because he's a big tadpole. He's actually over a year old. 
He hatched out last year out of an egg, spent the whole summer as a tadpole, hibernated this winter, and now he's going to turn into a frog in a few weeks here. He'll get legs and be a frog. Okay, that's our green frog tadpole. Question number three, draw a picture of an animal that has gills for breathing. Now gills are something that allows an animal to breathe underwater, which we, you and I don't have. And the best one I saw in here for gills, if I can catch him, let me get a little water in here. And then I'm going to take a little gill I have to be careful with this guy because he is really delicate. He's pretty cool. There he is. Get the tadpole out of there. Look at that guys. That is a baby salamander. And if you look close, Right behind his head, in front of his front legs, these fuzzy things right there, those are gills. Gills that are like a fish would have. And that's how that little baby salamander breathes. Now that's a spotted salamander. He's going to get six or seven inches long when he's full grown, and he's going to live in the forest. But he's not ready to move into the forest yet. He's got a few more weeks he's going to spend time at the pond. So he's got four legs, a long skinny body, into a pretty good tail and his gill his eyes are up top and then he's got his gills right here they almost look like little feathers and that's going to help our salamander breathe under the water really cool they're hard to catch you usually don't catch any of those okay let's dump him back in the water okay we have one more question this says draw a picture of a plant that grows in the pond well, we didn't actually catch any plants, but if you look at the pond, there's all kinds of plants coming out of there. There's algae that lives under the water, and the green things coming up. These things right here that look like little spikes, they are cattails. This is last year, this is this year. So I'm just going to draw one of our cattails, and it's going to come up in big spiky leaves. This summer, these cattails will be all nice and green. There's our cattails. And look, this whole section of cattails is going to be a great place for those plants and animals to hide. So look, we got a back swimmer uses its legs, a tadpole uses its tail, the uh, baby salamander had gills, and we saw a cattail all here at the pond. Okay, I'm going to write my name down. But we didn't get to draw a picture of everything, so let's go back up here to the container. There's a few really cool animals I need to show you that we didn't even draw a picture of. Let's see here. Okay, guys, let's take a look at this guy. Now, take a look at that critter. That is called a water scorpion. It's got a really long tail. It's got six legs. Four of them you can see for swimming, and then it's two front legs in the very front. Do you see him sticking out there? He looks like a stick, doesn't he? And that's excellent camouflage. He's got eyeballs. You might be able to see the two little round eyeballs behind those two front legs, but those two front legs, they got claws on them. He's a predator. A predator means he catches and eats other animals. So if we left him in here too long with these tadpoles, he might actually try to catch a tadpole. That's called a water scorpion, a really cool animal that lives here in the pond. Okay, put him back. Now, we've talked about dragonflies a little bit. Let me get one more out of here. They have six legs. These are nymphs, and again, a nymph is a baby insect. Later this summer, this dragonfly is actually going to crawl out of the pond, and its exoskeleton, which is the crunchy coating on the outside of his body, will crack open, and he will get wings and fly away. Now, there's no dragonflies out on the pond today. It's a little too cool, but later this summer, this dragonfly will change into an adult and fly around the top of the pond. And you know what, guys? His favorite food is mosquitoes. So he's a really good bug to have around. He blends in with the mud, though. And when we got him out of the net, you saw how well he blended in. Some people call them mud bugs because they live down in the mud. Okay, what else do we got here? Let's take a look at this salamander. Actually, this one's a little easier. This is a little bigger than the one with gills. This is a different kind of salamander. He's called a red-spotted newt. Now, he lives in the water. He's not going to come up on land. Boy, he's pretty, pretty slippery. But you can see he's got red spots on his body, 
and that helps him. That's where he gets its name. Look at his tail. Can you see how flat his tail is? That tail he uses to swim. So it's like a big paddle. And he has legs that he can move around with too. Now the back of him is green, so he blends in with the bottom, but his belly is all bright yellow if we turn him over here. There you go, you can see his bright yellow belly. Red spotted newts. One of the more common salamanders we have in the pond. Really cool, but they do need to stay in the water. They're not gonna live on land. Okay, I think we've got almost everything covered here. Let me just look in here. Oh, yeah, there's a pretty good variety of stuff that lives here in our pond at uh, the Misi Nature Center. and. As if you would have come out here on our field trip this year with nets, you would have been able to catch all of these too. If there's a pond near your house, maybe you can get a little net and catch some stuff. But what we're going to do with all these guys, I'm going to show you right now. Since we're done looking at them, I'm going to bring the whole bucket down to the edge of the pond. And we don't want to take these guys home. They don't live in, in an aquarium. They want to live out here in the pond. So I am going to dump them right there they go back into the muck and they'll just hide back there look at them into the pond want to make sure we get that last dragonfly out of there and now our bucket's clean so hey guys that was our pond study and there's lots of ponds around here in the Poconos you can go up to them you don't even have to catch stuff go up to the edge and look and as the water warms up in the spring and the sun's out today the water's getting warmer those bugs and stuff will really swim around a lot more and once you catch one you can use a plastic container yogurt cups uh, plastic recycled dishes to put them in a little so you can look at them a little closer with water but always remember we want to put them back in the pond so i hope you had fun on our tour of the pond today and learned a lot about the creatures that live here mm -hmm.